Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. The EU wants to act independently in key matters while collaborating with partners when possible. It's called open strategic autonomy, and it may help break the cycle of recurring crises. Want to know more? Stay with us. The economic crisis, migration, Brexit, COVID-19, shortage of semiconductors and other key products, Russia's war on Ukraine, the energy crisis, supply chain disruptions, cyber attacks, political tensions with Asia. It's been rough, and without guarantees of a brighter geopolitical landscape, it's time to draw some lessons. The European Union faces a multitude of challenges that require unity, resilience, and especially more autonomy to secure strategic goods in key sectors such as critical raw materials, semiconductors, or medical products. Napoleon is seen as one of the first to have understood the importance of controlling, securing, and streamlining the supply of goods early on. And American General George Patton is believed to have said, I know nothing about this thing called logistics, but I for sure want a hell of a lot of it. And he wasn't wrong. No, he wasn't. But open strategic autonomy goes some steps further from logistics and smart supply chain management by adding geopolitics into the equation. Understood as the EU's will to act more independently and rely less on other countries while securing strategic partnerships to act together when possible, it seems the way to go. And the EU has already taken important steps in this direction. For example, with the Repower EU package to accelerate the clean energy transition and cut dependency on Russian gas and oil, the Recovery Plan for Europe, Next Generation EU, and other laws to secure energy efficiency, chip availability, cyber resilience, or industrial competitiveness, to mention just a few. But although open strategic autonomy might require, for example, the repatriation of strategic industries back to the EU, it should not jeopardize global trade partnerships. Quite the opposite. While certain reforms are necessary, working within the framework of the World Trade Organization is key to avoid the impression of protectionism and remain open to trade. Open strategic autonomy also aims at rebuilding the transatlantic partnership and engaging with a range of partners to address common challenges together. Innovation is also key for resilience. That's why in July 2022, the European Commission presented a new European innovation agenda to spearhead the new innovation wave. Finally, systemic thinking and foresight can also help policymakers in Europe identify threats and anticipate disruptions in the required responses, normalizing situations that would otherwise generate stress. So in the context of recurring global crises, open strategic autonomy can be called upon to provide the required preparedness. The EU-wide foresight network leads the Commission's efforts to embed strategic foresight into its work, and the forthcoming Spanish presidency of the Council wants to pay special attention to foresight and strategic autonomy as key elements for adding resiliency to the EU's long-term objectives of a greener, more digital and social Europe. Want to know more? Check out Andres Garcia Higuera and Clemens Weikart's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.